This is Lothar Tuppen, creator of the sword and sorcery show, The Sword of the Crimson Tatters, and you're listening to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. All better audio. We are not just good. We are all better. Attention! This is a production from the 4077. Making audio sound all better. But that is all. From the personal journals of Erasmus Faustus Jr. Doc Faustus and the Frankenstein Factory. Tonight's episode, Justice Has a Team. What has gone on before? Doc Faustus has faced otherworldly monsters many times before, but the one that had slithered into his laboratory that night and warned him to avoid Cedar City and then disintegrated before his eyes was one of a kind. This hideous messenger from beyond was only the beginning of the most fantastic adventures that he was ever to grapple with. Baxter Platt pulled back on the stick and then banked the autogyro over the decarbon building towards the northern skyline. His bird was about five minutes from Doc's tower and he didn't want to have to fight the brutal downdrafts this section of the city was given to at this time of day. He had just left the deck of the yacht, returning from his mission to check the mid-Atlantic platform he and the boys had just constructed. With the deck refitted, the platform would make a great refueling stop for planes and ships that otherwise wouldn't be able to navigate the cold waters of the ocean. They had, in fact, cut the ocean in half. Baxter was proud of his work, but the adventure that awaited him, that was awesome. Doc didn't put out the emergency red order without plenty of cause. The silhouette of the towering Justice Central building came into view, and the master of all things electrical turned his flying machine towards the landing pad atop the 90th story. One hand fell on one of the twin black 45s, in his shoulder holsters. If there was one thing he enjoyed as much as working out a voltage problem, it was drawing down on a target with his pistols. Monsters, dictators, all kinds of enemies of mankind had been in his sights, but never a kill shot. Shoot to wound. That was part of the philosophy that had drawn him to Faustus, Doc was able to kill a man in more ways than most men could count. But he didn't. In hundreds of expeditions into adventure that he had shared with the six foot nine inch master of science, Baxter had never known Doc to take a life. Even when that would have been easier than any other choice, the leader of the group he had come to know and respect would always find a way that did not involve killing. That voice rang out as he began his descent onto the pad. Platt saw Dr. Thursday waiting for him. It would have been hard to miss the six foot three powerhouse. His red hair and mammoth frame stood out anywhere, but were dwarfed by the man's infectious smile. He was already waving, and Baxter happily returned the gesture. The two men had been friends since they had broken out of a cell, along with Pancho Villa, years before. Tequila is an amazing thing. The autogyro slipped onto the ground as easily as a man walking off a curb, and a moment later, the rotors were beginning to slow. But the sound still made quiet conversation. Possible. How many are there? McAvoy is here, but the others are on their way. What's it all about? 
Not a lot of facts at this point, but you can be sure it involves monsters. Leaping lightning! Just the kind of thing I was hoping to hear. The two men, the tops in their scientific fields, rushed down into the skyscraper headquarters. Doc's den was, as always, warm and inviting. The log fire crackled and sent smoke up the chimney, which turned a small generator wheel. Nothing was wasted in this citadel of science. Mr. Mike McAvoy held out his bread loaf sized hands to Baxter as he entered. Mr. Mike! Baxter, how are you? Glad to be in and out of the weather. He's down in the lab. Someone got any more info on what's going on? The others turned and smiled to see Mary Jane Rhubarb, the world's most noted expert on chemistry and botany. They all looked at the raven-haired beauty's hand. It's a rapier. No big thing. Though it was said to have been the property of Cyrano de Bergerac at one time. And here I thought he was fictional. The Three Musketeers were fictional, but Cyrano was real. And quite a writer, I understand. He wrote the first story where a trip to the moon was accomplished by the use of a rocket. They all turned to see James Jesse standing in the doorway. He was known the world over as the king of mathematics and physics, as well as someone trained in every form of hand-to-hand combat known to man. As soon as MTB gets here, we'll be ready to do whatever it is Doc has called us here to do. He's already here. I saw him as I passed the library. He probably already went to the lab to find Doc. Doc did have a flair for the dramatic, and this piece, erupting from invisible speakers, was the fanfare that played when the troops had all arrived and a quest was about to begin. But for now, the music just meant this. There's danger, excitement, and adventure ahead. And ready for it was Doc Faustus and the Secret Science Six. In the distance, foreboding clouds continued to gather. Evil was on its way. And this group, men who sought nothing but justice and honor, would be the lightning rod for hell's thunder in moments to come. What was this monstrous malevolence that lay only minutes away? Listen next time in Chapter 3. Evil Wears Cheap Perfume. Doc Faustus and the Frankenstein Factory. Chapter 2. Justice Has a Team was written by C. Wayne Owens and produced by Victor Aurelius. It starred Pete Lutz as Dr. Thursday, Carrie Michael Ayers as Baxter Platt, Matt Weller as Mike McAvoy, Melody Gaines as Mary Jane Rhubarb, Wayne Hayward as James Jesse, and Victor Aurelius as the narrator. Music by Kevin McLeod. Copyright C. Wayne Owens, The 4077th, and All Better Audio, 2017. Visit our website at the 4077th.blogspot.com. This has been an All Better Audio production. This production was set together by the All Better Audio Sound All Better. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, dear mutual. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> This was not only a birthday greeting for the Mutual Audio Network, which, as you may know, has been bringing you the finest in audio drama for just a little more than one year. It was also a way of letting you know how long 20 seconds are. Why should you know it? Because the CDC recommends, during this COVID-19 situation, that you and me and everybody wash our hands with soap and water as often as possible for at least 20 seconds. So get all of your fingers, get the palms, get the backs of your hands, and a little bit up your wrists, and make sure you change out your towels more frequently as well. If it helps to sing Happy Birthday or some other song, as you do so, why not? This was a public service announcement from the Mutual Audio Network.